There is an underground weapons manufacturer using large-scale 3D printing to produce some of the most advanced and high-performing tactical gear on the planet. If you're in a nerf fight, so Out of Darts or Luke is a YouTube influencer who focuses on Nerf mods. And in this video, we're gonna go through how a hobby turned into one of the largest producers of custom Nerf mods in the United States and eventually got a place on Jimmy Kimmel. So Luke started out as a professional filmmaker working in corporate and commercial film. And he did that for 12 years before eventually quitting to pursue Out of Darts full time. It is a brand channel where he gets to dive deep into what this hobby entails. The channel started off in about 2015 where he started regularly posting videos about Nerf mods and selling 3D prints of those mods through his website, Out of Darts. He started off with a small print farm in his garage where he would make these Nerf mods as the orders came in. Over time, as the channel grew, he moved away from just doing mods and expanded his portfolio to actually creating the Nerf guns themselves. The very first one that he designed was the Jupiter, which was a flywheel Nerf gun that shot Nerf balls at a high rate of fire. The Jupiter came out in 2018 and was a very large success for Out of Darts, and the video got tons and tons of views. From there, Luke continued to make new modifications and to work within the community, growing out more Nerf blasters with his design partner, Tarek, eventually building a version that was custom for Science Bob, who demonstrated it on the Kill Show. And the momentum seems to be continuing because even just this month, Out of Darts launched a new Nerf blaster that sold out of pre-orders very quickly without even a full public video on the singular Out of Darts channel. And this is an excellent case study of how to create products with 3D printing and how to leverage it in a way that many people just don't realize and don't understand yet in modern companies and modern supply chains. So we're gonna dive into that even more. First of all, let's just say that Out of Darts is a master manufacturer. Even though it is a small family run business, Luke continuously pursues improvement within his factory and the layout of it. He has multiple videos on his channel doing farm tours where he shows the factory and how they do the processes and how he's improved it over time to make sure it's as efficient as possible. The Out of Darts factory is actually really fascinating because there are hundreds, maybe even thousands of Nerf modifications, Nerf blasters, and associated foam dart blasters out there on the market, and more being created all the time through 3D printing. And Luke takes care of a lot of them, which means that he has hundreds to thousands of screws, small 3D printed parts, not to mention all the variations of color and everything else. So he is a very big believer in the lean and he has implemented it very well. If you ever wanna see how to lay out a small factory, his channel is one to watch because it is an excellent example of how to lay out that type of a system. But this is also a giant challenge because managing large numbers of SKUs, which Out of Darts definitely has, they have about a half a dozen of their own internal blasters, including the Jupiter, the Little Rocket, its new variation, the Crooked Cousin, the Proton Pack, Huria, which by the way is a really awesome design and I gotta get a hold of one of these things because having a little pack that's also a dark blaster is just, it's one of my favorite little product design tweaks. And then of course there's other designs that he has pulled in from other partners and other Nerf influencers and designers. So there's a lot of optionality here. So how do you deal with that? 3D printing actually enables it in a way that was never possible before. 10 years ago, Lou wouldn't be able to do this because printing wasn't good enough and other manufacturing models would be completely impossible. The injection molding costs for all of the individual mods and dark blasters themselves would be hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. But instead of paying for all of that tooling, he's able to just buy the printing itself. And if you were to create a product yourself, you could either build that print farm or contract a 3D printing manufacturer like ourselves to produce your product at scale for you. But 3D printing allows for that really high level of variation you still have to manage it and it still can be very difficult to set up those processes where you are managing, oh, and word came in for a purple small bracket that does whatever and making sure that that is reliable and set out. But again, this goes back to Luke's big belief in land manufacturing and how they track and control that process all the way throughout to the box being shipped out the door. So that variation is both a blessing in the context that it's now possible to do, but a curse in the fact that it's still complicated to do. Because even though 3D printers can make anything on demand, they can't always make anything well on demand. And modifying that is something that you have to really be aware of. If just the simple switch from a dark color to a light color can create a dark stain on the bottom surface of the part, which would not be shippable. So making sure purge procedures are in place or purge settings within the print itself are all things that have to be considered. 
So again, that high variation is an awesome capability that's now possible, but can introduce its own problems. And if you're contracting mass production 3D printing, that's something you have to be aware of. But obviously Luke has been able to achieve it because since starting out in his garage in 2018, they moved into a much larger production space and they went from about a dozen machines to over 38 in 2018. And now they have over a hundred. It is a Prusa farm that is producing them and likely they are started moving into other types of printers as new technologies come along. And ultimately the feather in the cap was the fact that in 2022, they were featured on Kimmel using some of his Nerf blasters. And again, I recommend you go over to his channel and watch the video about the creation of those proton packs. But this is such a fantastic case study because not only from the manufacturing context of how do you enable the capability to create thousands of SKUs without high upfront manufacturing costs as has been the traditional situation, making these types of businesses impossible before, but really the example of how to get distribution and advertising. It's fairly likely that Luke pays basically zero for marketing costs with all of these things. Because number one, he is focused on a very particular niche. The Nerf community is small and centralized focused and listens to him. So as a Nerf influencer, he's one of the guys who's the trendsetter and the master communicator about how this works. So he has a dedicated community who is interested in his product. He has a distribution channel natively through his channel. He also just has the brand building from it. People will trust his products that he is producing because he has that channel where people can get to know him. And this is something that many companies overlook. They think that creating the product is the only part of the process, but the distribution, the marketing, and the trust that comes along with that product is something that is not as easy as creating the product itself. And that's something that Luke has demonstrated over and over again, both with tours of his factory and the long-term goal and showing of the improvements and development of the product. He hasn't created the Jupiter Blaster and just sat there and continued to sell those. He's continued to expand and continued to improve. Again, enabled by 3D printing. Since he has this large manufacturing capability, he is able to continue to iterate on the designs. If somebody gives him feedback on one of his blasters, he's able to immediately change it so that every blaster going forward is improved. And he didn't have to change a mold. He didn't have to ship another thousand over from some other country. He was able to just update the design and move on with life. He's able to be exceptionally flexible in a way that has never been possible before. And by doing that, he's been able to create products that were never possible before. Products that his customers love and are higher performing than anything else out on the market. When you look at the juxtaposition of this, which is Nerf itself, Nerf has to create a gun that is fairly lukewarm and the same for everybody. Something that anybody can use and kind of enjoy and have a good experience with. But Luke, since he has this high capability for high variation, he's able to pursue the very specific needs that people are looking for and pursue ideas that might otherwise be too expensive to pursue by a corporate giant. Nerf has to make a whole mess of Nerf guns before they can actually make their money back. Whereas Luke can focus on a very specific application of those and make fewer, but still a lot of them and try iterations of guns until he finds the product that really works. And even if a product doesn't work right off the bat and doesn't just have a spike of sales, since it's digitally stored inside of his factory, he can sell one per year for the next 10 or 20 years and it would pay for the upfront expenses of maybe even the design and time put into it. So the 3D printing capability both gives him high variation, ultimate return on investment, and allows him to focus and pursue niches that were never possible before and that larger corporate entities generally don't pursue. But those companies could if they wanted to adopt 3D printing. So overall, Out of Darts is just a perfect example of a business that couldn't exist even 10 years ago because the manufacturing itself would have been far too cost prohibitive to even get started. Millions of dollars in molds, and then you have to swing for the fence and hope that your product is successful. With 3D printing, companies like Out of Darts are able to pursue the long tail and focus on niches that were never addressed before and create really exceptional products and work until they find the winner that can really carry them through and define the company. But at the same time, Out of Darts is a very specific type of case because he also figured out how to use digital media and content, good useful content for his audience that also helps to promote his products so that he doesn't have the marketing expense. He's able to create exceptional products and he's able to meet the needs of individuals in a way that was never possible before. But it is possible today with large scale 3D printing.
If you like this video and you want to see more, please comment down below and don't forget to subscribe. We are want to do more of these videos of real 3D printed products out in the world because not enough of these companies get the love that they really deserve. So give us any ideas of other companies that you've seen that are doing this kind of stuff and we'd love to take a closer look. Have a great day, everybody.